Good evening. And welcome to a, the annual Paideia. My name is Jessica Johnson. I have the honor of serving as the superintendent for the Dodson School District. The Juvenile Lions Club has a proud history of supporting Dodson students. The Lions became a club in 1939, 84 years ago. And from the beginning, the Juvenile Lions Club annually recognized the many accomplishments of our athletes. In 1984, nearly 40 years ago, the Lions Club added recognition of our high school scholars to this annual event and renamed it the Paideia. Paideia is an unusual word, and I'm not even sure if I'm saying it correctly. The term was used in ancient Greece to describe an idealistic type of education and training provided to students. Paideia stressed a well-rounded education that taught mathematics, philosophy, history, and grammar, but also music and gymnastics. This broad range of studies was designed to produce enlightened young people ready to contribute to Greek society. A Paideia graduate was prepared for an active role in the civic life of Greek culture. When I think about our efforts to create a well-rounded and educational experience for today's students at Dodgeland, there are many parallels to the Greek Paideia. The arts and music are valued and celebrated. Physical education and health are graduation requirements, just as our mathematics, English, science, social studies, financial literacy, and more. Students are also encouraged to take additional coursework in areas of personal interest, welding, graphic design, agriculture, business, and accounting. And we value participation in extracurriculars, including um, athletics. Students, tonight is about celebrating your successful involvement in all that Dodgeon has to offer you and that you have taken. Invitations were sent out to over 100 Dodgeland students, which speaks to the commitment to learn within the classroom and beyond. Additionally, we will be awarding the traveling trophy to the class with the highest GPA tonight, a Dodgeland tradition that has been in place since 1993. Our speaker tonight exemplifies the ideals of a contemporary Hydea experience, and his class earned the traveling trophy his senior year. Eric Cruckton is an aerospace engineer, what we typically call a rocket scientist, and is a 2013 graduate of Dodgeland High School. During his years at Dodgeland, he participated in academic decathlon, completed a school-to-career program working for local attorney Alexander Stormont, and was a back-to-back -back gold medalist in the regional and state visual arts classics. Even engineers can have an artistic side. Since I knew he was an academic and the arts, I had to reach out to Mrs. Penthorn and see what was Eric like in high school. Mrs. Penthorn shared that she met Eric one day while she was on hall duty and saw that he was sneak eating at his locker, and she gave him a hard time about it. If you know Mrs. Ms. Mrs. Penthorn, then it's no surprise that they had some envoy friendly banter, and she became impressed with his intelligence, wit, and his debate skills, maybe arguing, which led her to recruit him for academic decathlon. On to college, Eric attended Arizona State University, which he and I have in common. Despite the challenge of working multiple jobs through his college years, Eric was selected to participate in the prestigious Fulton Undergraduate Research Initiative under industry-renowned professor Dr. Timothy Takahashi. Eric successfully led the first team to participate in the Autonomous Vehicle Systems Capstone Program, and he graduated in the fall of 2020 with his Bachelor of Science in Aerospace Engineering, emphasizing aeronautics. Again, rocket science. Eric's career highlights include the following. While working at Safran Aircraft Engines, he participated in the first flight certification of the Bombardier Global 7000 APU, which he uh, helped me identify. That's a business class power, jet power unit. While working with Rolls-Royce, he was selected from the top 10% of employees to travel to England for special assignment and participated in the flight certification of two business class jet engines and one large commercial jet engine. He's a three-time Wings of Success Award winner, recognizing outstanding engineering achievements by Belkin Engineering. Now working with Blue Origin, he has been ranked the top 5% of employees for Blue, recognizing outstanding achievement. He was a Challenge Wing winner for delivery of the first two BE-4 flight engines ever produced to United Launch Alliance. He oversaw the delivery of all critical flight components for a non-public satellite program, and he was recently promoted to Senior Technical Project Manager overseeing the development and first flight of the new Glenn Stage 1 fluid system. 
A fun fact about Eric is that he has traveled to 49 states and 26 countries. Please join me in welcoming 2013 Dodson graduate Eric Preston. I don't know that I'll be able to speak as uh, consistent as Mr. Johnson here. I want to start by thanking Mrs. Henthorne and Mrs. Johnson for the opportunity to speak tonight. It's both an honor and a privilege, and 15 years ago, I would have never imagined that I'd be standing on the stage talking to you. When they first reached out to me a few weeks ago to share my story, I was a little bit surprised and a lot of bit excited. Of course, once I went to put the pen to the paper, the PTSD of late nights, drinking too much caffeine while trying to crank out yet another aerodynamics lab report hit me like a brick wall. As much as I try to convince myself otherwise, I was never much of a writer. My teachers, Ms. Schrammick was here, would tell you, and my discipline record, uh, will show that talking was always more of my strong suit than writing. You know, for someone who uh, has to present to Jeff Bezos, you'd think I'd have this thing mastered by now, but it's always a work in progress. Jokes aside, I'm happy to be here, so thank you. Now, I'm sure you're all wondering who the heck this guy is, or maybe not after the wonderful introduction from Mrs. Johnson and why he's speaking to us today. Well, I think Mrs. Johnson did a wonderful job on the introduction, so I'll switch gears as to the why. I'm here because there was a point in time when I was just like you. Ten years ago, I roamed these same hallways, sharing classes with many of the same teachers. Wow, ten years? I guess the gray hair striding from my head reinforced that fact. I'm here to show you that just because you grew up in a small town doesn't mean you can't pursue big dreams. I did it, and you can too. So I'd like to share 10 lessons that I attribute to my success, and then a little bit about how I learned those lessons along the way. Number one, be a lifelong learner, never stop learning. Number two, be adventurous, always try new things and visit new places. That's how I got to 49 states and 26 countries at 27 years old. Number three, self-doubt is natural. Don't sour in it, embrace it. And on the flip side, let others doubt fuel your fire. Number four, make a positive impact on everyone you meet. You never know who's gonna be your boss at your next job. Number five, refusal to fail inhibits your possibility of success. You need to embrace failure. Don't be afraid of it, don't shy away from it. Number six, don't dwell on the past, dwell on the future. If I would have dwelled in the past, I probably wouldn't be here today. Number seven, you make your own luck. You're in the pilot seat, it's your life, you're in control. Number eight, surround yourself with people you aspire to be like. I know it's cliche, but boy, it's true. Number nine, discipline is more powerful than motivation. When motivation comes and goes, discipline remains. And number 10, the ability to forgive and forget is oftentimes more powerful than the power of remembering. Now, let's begin, or start from the beginning. Well, not the very beginning, or we'd be here all night. Growing up, I had a mostly normal life with a large, quirky, and loving family. It's the family that I attribute to a lot of my passions and current success. You see, before I was even old enough to start making up my own mind, my pilot mom and grandpa had me flying around in the back seat of various airplanes and making the yearly pilgrimage to Oshkosh for the EAA. As you can see here. Add to that trips every summer, traveling around the country with my grandparents in their travel trailer, and boy did I have one awesome childhood. The majority of those 49 states were visited with my mom and grandparents. And I feel very fortunate, though my wallet today might tell you otherwise to have a family who built a travel, or a passion for travel, exploration, and aviation. There's some travel photos from around the world. In my early school years, I was an interesting student. On one hand, I was a participant in many of the advanced and gifted classes. 
Though I never got straight A's, I managed to regularly pull in A's and B's. On the other hand, my behavior wasn't exactly something to be proud of. My mom will tell you that most parent-teacher conferences would end with, Eric's a bright kid, if only he would learn to keep his mouth shut. Well, we see not a thing's changed there. In middle school, I took my relatively normal upbringing and threw that out the window with my new punk rock friend group. And by the time I entered the seventh grade, you'd catch me walking the halls in a studded leather jacket, combat boots with a six inch tall mohawk to top it off. I was a rebel, and the in-school offenses grew from simple talking infractions to much more egregious activities that we won't mention here, but that caused the uh, Antioch Upper Grade School Administration to label me as an at-risk youth. Naturally, as any team would, I blamed our assistant principal for having a vendetta toward my friend group and being overly heavy-handed on the discipline. And looking back as an adult, I can tell you that certainly did have an element of truth, but by no means was I guilt-free. Despite our track record, we made it through the eighth grade without getting the boot. Only now, we had a little bit of a problem. Our infamy had preceded us. Much of the eighth grade staff and administration alike had a predisposition about uh, about us, and the way we were treated reflected that. We were barred from many opportunities that our peers had. And let me tell you about Camp Timberland, a super fun summer camp that got you out of class for one week in the middle of the year to go have a blast with the rest of your eighth grade peers. Who wouldn't want to get out of class for a week when you're in eighth grade? People were selected by drawing names out of a hat, and our names were drawn. My friend group, that you see up in the top right corner there. However, the administration and some teachers wanted to deny us that trip. That is, until three of my favorite teachers, Ms. Tyndall, Mr. Gazi, and Mr. Rudd, stood up for us and insisted that we were given a clean slate. It was a new year, after all, and I shout out to those teachers that not only stood up for us, but taught us some very important life lessons from a young age. Ultimately, we did make it onto that trip, we did have a blast, and we did not let those teachers down. Now, I don't want you to think that I got my act together and that it was all sunshine and daisies the eighth grade year. What really happened was that I took getting in trouble in school and traded that for getting in trouble out of school. I was a handful as a teenager, especially for a mom who was working a full-time job, going to play school, and raising me on her own. Eventually, it came to a point where it became too much, so I was shipped off to the boot camp of dad to get me whipped back into a young, respectable man. It was there that I had the opportunity for a fresh start, something that I have repeated multiple times in my life, and with that, I've seen massive self-growth. It took a whole lot of Wednesday night chat nights where my father and I would lock ourselves in the basement to have deep conversations, not as father to son, not as adult to child, but human to human. Here, he taught me the importance of respect, self-worth, reputation, and so many other things. Those were special times. Eventually, my dad would con me into going to work for him, at his tire business in place of Wednesday night chat nights and gave me one of the greatest gifts of all time, his work ethic. And for those of you who know my father, you'll know that he's one of the hardest working humans on this planet. And you'll also know that my mom was definitely the source of my intelligence. <laughs> I kid, I kid. I love both of my parents dearly. And they both gifted me with some amazing tools to succeed. Before I knew it, I was in my first year of high school leaving the nest and the family business to go work for the local supper club, Blue Inn as a dishwasher. Most of you here today probably don't remember it because it's no longer there, but I'm sure some of you do. As an aside, I firmly believe that everyone should have to work in some sort of service-oriented job at some point in their lives. I learned so many things over the course of my eight years in the business, rising from the rank of a dishwasher all the way to the sous chef at Old Hickory Country Club. It was in the heat of battle in the kitchen that I continued to hone my craft and build an unparalleled work ethic. And there we are. In school, my behavior was better. I was still a little bit of a rebel, but I learned how to do it without getting myself in a ton of trouble. Miss Hemphorn can attest to that. Despite continuing the track record of being in advanced and gifted classes, I really wasn't one to ever truly apply myself in school. I had an arrogance and a cockiness about me because learning came easy something that I would be very humbled by my first year of college and my first failures in college. I became a member of the Dodge and JV basketball team, an active participant in the arts, and continued to work hard at my service jobs. I also started to get myself tangled with the wrong crowds outside of school. And this is where I first learned how true that cliche statement is, 
you become like the people that you surround yourself with. For the most part, I managed to stay out of trouble. Just don't ask my dad and stepmom about the night they had to come home early from the Milwaukee Bucks basketball game. <laughs> but my extracurricular activities uh, made their way back into the school, and my peers and my teachers started to whisper things like, he's wasting his intelligence. He's not going anywhere in life. He's, he's going to end up in jail before he graduates high school. I should back up and emphasize some of my peers and some of my teachers. My close friends never doubted me. My favorite teachers, Mr. Bothan, Ms. Henthorne, Mrs. Shaw, Mrs. Schrammick, Mrs. Maher, and the lot continued to believe in me. They saw a kid who wasn't rotten at the core, just a little bit lost. Someone in need of guidance, and it was their guidance that helped set me on the track to the success that I experienced today. Eventually, I went on to graduate from Dodgeland in June of 2013 with no special accolades or honors, no major academic achievements, I was, however, a back-to-back -back state champion in the visual arts classic. Shout out to Mrs. Henthorne for teaching art to an engineer. Not an easy feat. I knew that my next move was going to college, and I didn't want to spend the rest of my life in the dark kitchens of Dodge County for a little bit more than minimum wage. In the beginning, I knew exactly what I wanted to study, law at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, or so I thought. I spent my senior year at Dodgeland in the School of Career program under Mrs. Maher, working for the local attorney, Alexander Stormont, so it seemed like a no-brainer. But there were two problems. Number one, I didn't have the academic track record to get into one of the top schools in the nation. And number two, I didn't have the funding to pay for the high costs. No problem. I spent my first two years going to UW-Waukesha, now UW-Milwaukee, and used the guaranteed transfer program to get me into Madison. Whoops. That solved the academic part, but I still had to hold up to figure out the funding. Naturally, I reached out to my family to ask for some money and was told, if we pay for you, we're gonna have to pay for all the other kids and we're gonna go broke. Bye, brothers and sisters. As it turns out, that was one of the better things to happen to me. I went on to fund the entirety of my college education with the help of FAFSA loans, of course, and today I'm proud to say that I'm free of student loans. It's an amazing feeling and highly rewarding. It taught me the true value of my classes. Failing and having to pay for a class twice really sucks. And it was a math class too, believe it or not. And it continued to hone the work ethic and discipline that I started building in the years before. Though, I won't lie to you, nothing about that was easy. And I had to make a lot of sacrifices to make that happen. Worth it though. While my peers are paying down their debt, I'm paying for trips to Europe, Africa, Asia, Hawaii, Alaska. Partway through my time at Waukesha, I had a major change of heart with respect to my degree. A mentor in my life had questioned why I was going to become a lawyer. And the more I thought about it, it was for all the wrong reasons. Prestige, money, reputation. There's no real passion, desire, or drive to be an attorney. So I took a semester off to focus on saving money and figure out what my true passions were. Remember when I mentioned growing up in a family that was deeply passionate about aviation and exploration? That was for a reason. I went right back to those roots. Those things truly made me happy, and I knew I needed to find something that aligned with them. In addition, I knew that I loved math, science, and history. And what could I do to combine all of that? Aerospace engineering, of course. And for the history portion, rather than studying it, I could work for a space company and be a part of writing it. Unfortunately, Madison doesn't have an aerospace engineering program, so I was forced to look elsewhere. Eventually, I ended up at Arizona State University. And I know what you're thinking, and no, it wasn't because of ASU standing on the list of top party schools in the nation. I had previously visited the state and knew I loved it. And my mom had a house that I could use to get in-state tuition. I want to take an em a second to emphasize making good financial decisions, even though you're young, because they will follow you for the rest of your life. And that's partially why I'm debt free. It was at ASU that I really formed myself into the person that I am today. Working full time and chasing an aerospace engineering degree is hands down the most difficult thing that I've ever done, but it's worth every sleepless night, missed party, and added stress. I continue to build upon my foundation of work ethic. I really learned the importance of discipline. I learned how to have fun in new ways, acquiring new hobbies like country dancing and dirt bike riding. As you can see here, life is tough. Don't forget to have some fun along the way. My professors continue to have a profound impact on my life. People like Dr. Dom, who was once the chief scientist of the US Air Force, 
were somehow able to teach me more about life and rocket engines in three times weekly classes than I had learned in all my years prior. Industry renowned Dr. Takahashi provided me with the opportunity to participate in a highly selective undergraduate research program studying the habits of pilots. It was here that I grew from a misguided young man into a well-rounded, disciplined, hardworking, and intelligent individual. It was here that I was minted into an aerospace engineer that could stand next to any other engineer. And it was at ASU that I met my first college roommates, one of which would go on to help me in obtaining my first internship with Belkan Engineering. That internship then led to my first job and ultimately many of the achievements that Mrs. Johnson kicked us off with, certifying a business class power unit for Saffron on the left, um, going to work with England for the prestigious Rolls-Royce on the flight certification of two business class jets that I'll probably never fly on, and one large commercial jet engine, working with Lawrence Livermore National Labs on nu a nuclear fusion reactor, and finally to where I am today, building a road to space with Blue Origin. I think it's important to note that I didn't walk from ASU with any special honors or accolades. I'm not a superhuman. I'm just another small town kid chasing big dreams, making sure to seize every opportunity presented to me. ASU has a lot of seriously smart people. That really humbled me. And my intelligence didn't particularly set me apart. What did, though, was that work, work ethic and high level of self-discipline. You see, one of the first things that my dad taught me was that you should keep your head down and make sure that you're always the hardest working person in the room. And through that hard work, you may someday join the smartest people in the room. While I'm not quite there yet, working hard has put me on a great trajectory. And besides, it's hard to be the smartest person in the room when the room is full of some of the most brilliant minds on the planet. Anytime you have the chance to observe, listen, and learn from people that you aspire to be like, don't hold back. Ask questions, show your passion and your ambition. You won't regret it. I know I did, and I hope that someday, a young engineer that has the same glisten in their eyes, passion for learning, and ambition to seize the moment, walks into the office, my office, to pick my brain much like I did to those before me. Now, let's get back on track. Blue Origin. I'm sure that most people in the room probably have no clue who we are and what we do, but you know Elon Musk and you know SpaceX. Yeah, we're their competition. A Jeff Bezos-backed startup that has the goal of making it possible for millions of people to live and work in space for the benefit of Earth. A grand and daunting challenge. One that we frequently recognize in the industry by saying, space is hard. It's a motto. But I'll tell you what, when you see and feel 550,000 pounds of thrust coming out of the business end of our oxygen-rich, liquefied natural gas BE4 engine, it makes every second spent working for this company worth it. And I'll play a quick video to show you what that looks like. the observation platform a mile away you can feel that thing pounding in your chest it's really something remarkable Oops. but what does this all mean for you what does my story have to do with yours more than you think remember I was once just like you a small town kid from Lowell Wisconsin walk the halls of Dodger High School. I firmly believe that you can do anything you set your mind to with a lot of hard work and a little bit of sacrifice. And I hope that I've showed you that the sky isn't just the limit. Life isn't rocket science. I would know. Life is harder. But you too can rise to the occasion, overcome the challenges, and go get it.
Thank you so much for those words of wisdom and inspiration, Eric. Uh, your top 10 was an incredible list. Your journey is amazing, and I can't wait to see what's next. And now I will pay attention to Blue Origin. At this time, I will be inviting Mrs. Modak to the podium for the recognition of our senior athletes. When she is done, Mr. Beer will present all of the academic awards. Then following Mr. Kemper's closing comments, we ask everyone to stay so we can take group photos of tonight's award recipients. And we'll do that in the back of the room. The first photo will be our senior award recipients. And then once that's done, we'll call each group to the back for pictures as well. I will let you know this is our very first time ever bringing students up onto the stage for our awards, thanks to our amazing new sound and light system and stairs to be able to do so. So bear with us as we pull you up here in groups to make sure we can get you all up here at each time. All right, Mrs. Moten. I'd first like to start to say thank you to our Juno Lioness Juno Lions Club for sponsoring this wonderful annual awards program and recognizing our students' academic as well as athletic achievements. The Dodson School District and our students are truly blessed to have your ongoing support and commitment in celebrating excellence. Congratulations to the students who are being recognized here tonight. This is your night to shine. You've invested yourself into high levels of performance, both in the classrooms and in the athletic arenas. You should be very proud of your accomplishments. I'd also like to extend a huge thank you to the parents for encouraging and supporting your child's dedication towards academic achievement and participation in Dodson athletics and co-curricular activities. Your continued involvement makes a tremendous impact on every student, not just your own. And your support for the athletic and co-curricular programs is greatly appreciated. I'm honored tonight to recognize multiple groups of student athletes. The first group that we are going to recognize are seniors that participated in a sport at any time during your high school career. When your name is read, I'd like you to please come to the front area right in front of the stage for this group. And I'd ask that everyone please hold their applause until we get our entire group up here in front. Samantha Aguilar. Samantha competed in softball for one year, earning one varsity letter. Joel Alvalo-Salas. Joel competed in soccer for three years, earning three varsity letters, football for one year, earning a letter, and also basketball for one year. Matthew Kane. Matthew Kane completed in, competed in basketball for one year. Annalise Cotter. Annalise competed in softball for one year. Rebecca Egebrecht. Rebecca competed in volleyball for three, three years, earning one varsity letter. Christian Feller. Christian competed in football for three years, earning one varsity letter. Luis Galvin Ramirez competed in soccer for two years, earning two varsity letters. Trayton Gran Schultz competed in soccer for one year, earning a manager a letter and also in basketball for one year, also competing a manager letter. Eric Gutman completed in football for one year. Natasha Kuntz has competed in soccer for three years, earning three varsity letters. Gedman Michelinas, Gedman competed in wrestling for two years, earning two varsity letters, track and field for one year, earning one varsity letter, and football for one year, earning a varsity letter. Peyton Milfred. Peyton competed in volleyball for one year. Carly Nails. Carly has competed in softball for four years, earning two varsity letters, competed in volleyball for two years, and also basketball for a year. Bethany Numidor. Bethany competed in volleyball for one year. Annabella Ockerlander. Annabella competed in track for one year. 
Matthew Pazic. Matthew Pazic has competed in the Horicon Youth Track Team for two years. Hannah Prince. Hannah is our German exchange student, and she has been busy this year. She has competed in cross country, earning a varsity letter, and also this spring in track and field, and will be earning a varsity letter. Zach Reinwald. Zach has competed in cross country for three years, earning three varsity letters. Also track and field for three years, earning three varsity letters, and was recognized as an MVP. Shane Rosenberg. Shane competed in our four contract team for two years. Andrew Schmidt. Andrew competed in soccer for one year as a manager. Joey Stotts. Joey competed in football all four years, earning two varsity letters, and was recognized as a captain. Wrestling for three years, earning three letters, and also track and field for two years, two letters, as well as basketball for one year. Emma Verbeaton. Emma competed in cross country for one year, earning a varsity letter, and basketball for one year, earning a varsity letter. Colin Wagner. Colin has competed in baseball for two years, earning two varsity letters. Football for one year, earning a varsity letter, and also competed in wrestling. Shania Wehrman. Shania has competed in softball for four years, earning two varsity letters. She's competed in volleyball for two years, basketball for one year, and she also assisted the middle school basketball coaches for two years in coaching. And Rhea Zimmerman. Rhea has competed in track and field for four years, earning three varsity letters. Let's give this group of senior athletes a nice round of applause. The next group of athletes that we are going to be recognizing have earned four varsity letters in the same sport during their high school career, and some have multiple four-year letter winning awards. If I take you back to the spring of 2020, I'm sure one thing rises to the mind of all of us, COVID. That is the year where our seniors were freshmen, and all of us remember that schools closed and sports shut down. We did not want our students, though, to not be able to move forward to be earning towards four-year letter winner awards because COVID was out of their control, yours and mine. And so, if a student went out for a spring sport their sophomore year, they were granted, they went out for a spring sport their sophomore year, they were granted the varsity letter for their freshman season that was cut short by COVID. As I recognize these four-year letter winners, we ask that they come on to the stage. You are gonna be receiving a plaque that recognizes your four-year letter achievement. Our first recipient of the four-year letter award Eric Perez. <laughs> Eric has competed in soccer for three years, earning three varsity letters. He competed in football for one year, earning one varsity letter. He was involved in wrestling as well for one year, earning one varsity letter. Basketball for one year, Eric has earned his four-year letter winner award for track and field. He has competed for four years and earning four varsity letters. Congratulations, Eric. <laughs> Our next athlete receiving a four-year award is Tara Spalma. 
Sarah competed in volleyball for three years, earning two varsity letters, and she's earning her four-year letter winner plaque for the competition in track and field, four years, four varsity letters. Congratulations, Sarah. Kira Shaw. Kira Shaw has competed in volleyball for four years, earning three varsity letters, basketball for one year, and she is receiving her four-year letter winner's award for softball, competing all four years and earning four varsity letters. Congratulations to Kira. <laughs> Alexa Schultz. Alexis competed in volleyball for four years, earning four varsity letters, basketball for three years, earning two varsity letters, and she too is an achieving track and field athlete for four years competing and earning four varsity letters. Our congratulations to Alexis. Sarah Benzing. Sarah is being recognized as a double four-year letter winner award tonight. Sarah has competed in cross country for four years, earning four varsity letters, and also recognized as a captain for two years by her teammates and coaches. She's also competed in track and field for four years, earning four varsity letters. And in addition, She's been a dedicated person working with the wrestling program for three years, earning three varsity letters as a manager. Congratulations, Sarah. <laughs> Logan Pickard. <laughs> Logan is also a double sport athlete being recognized for earning four varsity letters in two sports. Logan competed in basketball for one year. He has competed in cross country for four years, earning four varsity letters, recognized by his teammates as a captain for two years and also selected MVP. In track and field, he has been competing for four years, earning four varsity letters, and again, recognized by his teammates as captain. Congratulations, Logan. <laughs> Maddie Poplinski. <laughs> Maddie also is a multi-sport four-year letter winner. She has earned four varsity letters in three sports. This is not a common achievement by high school athletes. Maddie has excelled in three different sports. She also was a football manager for one year, earning a varsity letter. In volleyball, four years competing, four years varsity letter, two years selected as MVP by her teammates, she was a manager one year because she was coming back from an ACL injury, but that was not gonna slow her down. And she was also recognized by her teammates as captain. In basketball, she competed for four years, again, earning four varsity letters, recognized by her teammates as captain. And this spring, she is in her fourth season of soccer and will be also receiving her fourth varsity letter. Congratulations, Maddie. The recipients of the four-year letter winners awards represents also their dedication, their hard work, their commitment, but probably above all their passion. Their passion to want to rise to the top, to excel by putting their best effort forward. Please help me congratulating these amazing student athletes one more time.
The final group of student athletes I'm proud to recognize tonight, they compete in a different kind of sport. In 2017, Dodgeland partnered with multiple area schools in forming a competitive youth trap shooting program. This program provides amazing opportunities for students to engage in another form of competitive sports. This year, we have more than 50 students in grades 5 through 12 involved in our Horicon Youth Trap Team. Our home base for this program is located at the Horicon Rod and Gun Club, where our team practices and they also host conference competitions as well as large invitational competitions. Our Dodgeland students continue to excel in this program. Nearly every meet, they are leading in varsity and JV teams with top five team performances with incredible scores and hearing the quote from their, co their coaches, crushing 25 in a row. That's not missing a clay herd pigeon, tw at least 25 in a row. Our students have also represented both the Dodson School District and the Horicon Youth Track Team at the state and national competitions every summer since the start of this program. There are five seniors who will also be earning their fourth varsity letter this season, so they too will be receiving plaques at their summer awards program. It's my pleasure to recognize them tonight for their achievements in trap shooting. Please come to the stage if you are here. Dylan Cohen. Yeah. Dylan again has excelled in trap shooting, competing all four years, earning four varsity letters. Dylan also has been highly competitive in wrestling for three years, earning three varsity letters, and also in football for three years, earning one varsity letter. Dylan, congratulations on your trap team achievements. Caden Mills. Caden also has competed at track for four years, in addition football for one year, basketball for two years, and as Caden and Dylan are up here on the stage, these are two names that I'm frequently typing into the announcement with having those high team scores or crushing 25 in a row. Congratulations, Caden. Brendan Rushing. Brendan is earning his four-year uh, award in trap. He also competed in football for one year. Austin Kramer. Austin has been competing again in trap all four years, earning his four-year award. And finally, our last four-year recipient, Ethan Peters. Austin and Ethan uh, started again when they were very young. It was one year into the program in 2018 is when Ethan and Austin started. And quick to follow right behind were Dylan, Caden, and Brendan joining in 2019. Ethan was also active in football for three years, earning two varsity letters, basketball for one year, and again, amazing achievements each and every week in track. Congratulations, Ethan. Again, gentlemen, you'll receive your four-year plaques at your summer awards, and good luck to you, along with every other Dodgeland athlete who continues to compete in our spring season, even though Mother Nature does not always cooperate with us. We're going to push through, and we're going to be able to finish strong. Congratulations again to all of our student athletes. Tonight, what an amazing group of young adults here with us. Just fantastic, all our great accomplishments. Next, we're going to talk about the Academic All-Conference. The Academic All-Conference Awards are to recognize students that excel in the classroom. To be recognized as an Academic All-Conference student, the student must meet the following criteria. 
complete four semesters of high school while maintaining a 3.5 cumulative GPA, achieve one of the following test criteria, a selection index score of 156 on the PSAT, a combined score of 1150 or above on the SAT, a composite score of 25 or above on the ACT. Tonight we are recognizing 14 all-conference students who will be receiving certificates and medals. Congratulations to each and every one of these deserving scholars. Vincent Klecker. Olivia Passick. Paris Rennick. Noelle Tull. Morgana Zahn. Trayton Grog Schultz. Carly Nails. Logan Picker. Tara Scalma. And Kira Shaw. Let's give these fine young students one more round of applause. Next, we're going to move on to our certificates of recognition. We're going to be honoring members of each high school class who have diligently attended to their academic studies and consistently strive for academic excellence. The Academic Excellence Awards are presented to students who have achieved a cumulative grade point average of 3.33 or higher through the first semester of this current school year. If you wouldn't mind, we're going to hold our applause. We're going to bring the groups, the kids up in groups so we can get them all on the stage. So here's going to be our first group of the class of 2026. Ashley Alator. Jayla Albrecht. Peyton Applin, Scarlett Armendariz, Alexis Bingen, Benjamin Bowman, Savannah Oblitz, Julia Candelero Perez, Caleb Kosova, Caden Janur, Olivia Downey, Brita Drager. Egan, or Allison Egan, excuse me, Bella Ferrari, Kaylin Fry, Kyle Goldston, Layla Heidner, Zoe Hilby, Isabel Justin, Andy Kelly, Adrian Leffler, 
Abigail Ishaka. Lauren Swanson. Angelina Prill. Keegan Rutherford. Noah Roberts. Maria Tatiana Rodriguez Umanor. Ryan Romero. Bianca Severo, Alyssa Tall, Sebastian Velasquez Cabrera, Wade Winter, Valen Zahn, and Jamie Zexer. These are our freshman honor students. Now, for the class of 2025, our sophomore honor students. Isabella Albert. <laughs> Logan Blattner. <laughs> Mason Carter. Justin, Mallory Cohn, Carson Marquardt, Anton McLeanis, McKenna Miller, Colton Picker, <laughs> Madeline Porches, <laughs> Rosalia Sanchez, Jenna Stone, <laughs> Jenna Tolman. Congratulations. One more round of applause. Junior honor students, Savannah Benson, <laughs> Emma Carpenter, Cohen Erston, Allie Filbeck. Vincent Blackard, Elise Kazakowski, Brooke Nails, 
Sandra Osorio, Olivia Passi, <laughs> Mia Pergande, <laughs> Eva Rosh, <laughs> Brienne Rival, <laughs> Harris Rennick. Iris Jennifer Sarzano Rivera. John Schramming. Landon Stiller. Noel Tull. Lydia Vandenberg. Lori Jean Wilson. And Morgana Zahn. Congratulations, Juniors. Next will be some members from our senior class. Not only will they be receiving a certificate, but we'll also have a medal that they can wear at graduation, which is rapidly approaching. So from the class of 2023, Matthew Kane. And Matthew Kodami is going to UW Oshkosh Fondala to study communications. Austin Kramer. Rebecca Engelbrecht. Drayton Brown Schultz. Drayton is going to Cornell University to study astrophysics. Emma Heitman. Parker Herman. <laughs> Parker is going to be attending Mount Mary University and studying fashion design. Charles Lemon. Yedvin Michelinus. Carly Nails. Carly's going to be attending UW Platteville studying animal science. Bethany Numidor. <laughs> Annabella Fokerlander. <laughs> Annabella's going to be going to Moraine Park studying so their paralegal program. Matthew Passing. Maddie Pavlinski. <laughs> Maddie will be attending UW Lacrosse, studying elementary education. Logan Pickard. <laughs> Logan will be attending Michigan Technological University, studying computer science. Hannah Prince. Tara Scalma. <laughs> Tara will be going to Carthage College studying criminal justice and psychology. Kira Shaw. Kaden Sorois. Samuel Walsh. Rhea Zimmerman. Congratulations, class of 2023. Our 
our salutatorian is under the weather, could not be here tonight. That's Kara Shaw. She's done amazing things here in her time at Dodger, and hope she's feeling better. I'm going to move on to our valedictorian. It is my pleasure to present the 2023 Dodger High School Valedictorian Award to Logan Pippen. classes and being named to our high honor throughout his high school career. Again, he'll be attending Michigan Technological University. Throughout his high school, Logan has been actively involved in numerous activities. He has been instrumental in running and enhancing the Purple Purpose Room. No matter what he's involved with, he gives 100 percent. Congratulations, Logan, on all of your high school accomplishments, and we wish you all the best as you pursue your goals. Congratulations. time for a traveling trophy. Each year, the class with the highest cumulative GPA is awarded the traveling trophy to recognize their academic efforts. And we're excited to bring back that trophy this year. In fourth place, with a cumulative GPA average of 2.69, is the class of 2025. In third place, with a cumulative GPA average of 2.89 is the class of 2024. In second place, with a cumulative GPA average of 2.94 is the class of 2023, which leads the class of 2026, our freshman, with the highest cumulative GPA average of 2.95. Any members of the class of 2026, come on up. Congratulations. Have the seniors go on. 
Seeing your academic achievement to the back. We'll just keep announcing pictures as we go, and there are cookies and water while you're waiting for 